Yes, yes, people, welcome back to the Mac by Channel TV. Welcome to today's episode of Transfer Talk and a few things to run through on the back of, you know, the in the know. Do you know what I mean? The sirens went off yesterday. ITK, right here. Do you know what I mean? TMC, we know what we're talking about, don't we? Called it yesterday. Big movements on Joe Pedro this week. I think we'll sign in this week. That was in yesterday's video. Yesterday morning filmed that, and well, yesterday afternoon came out. And then last night it came out Romano saying, here we go that the deal was done, that uh, Pedro would be signing for Newcastle in a deal worth £30 million, including add-ons. Now, Sky Sports News have officially released this today, that that is the case, that João Pedro and Newcastle United is looking very likely as Watford are considering it. Now, if they were going to say no, I think they would have rejected it already. You know, Pedro wants the move that's been put out there officially now as well, like I said yesterday. So it's, I think it's a matter of time before this one happens and you start seeing João Pedro to Newcastle actually happening in the flesh and makes his way up here in the next 24 to 48 hours for me. I think that that bid will get accepted, 30 million pounds. Now apparently Everton are trying to hijack the deal and join the race. <laughs> Wasting the time there, aren't they? Eh? Toffees, yeah? No one wants to support that toffee anymore, do they? Them toffees are out of date. Horrible. Frank Lampard, relegation battle. We've had a few players make that mistake before. Donny van der Beek, when he chose them over us, do you know what I mean? In all seriousness, realistically, you know, respect effort and everything, but th no. Unless they're offering a lot more money wage-wise, which again, this thing this summer about Newcastle not being able to spend FFP, Everton completely blew their FFP out of the water, spent over half a billion in the last few years since their ownership. They were meant to be getting deducted points and fined and all this. They obviously, they've sold the likes of Richarlison this summer. They're keeping a hold of Anthony Gordon as it stands, even though Chelsea are willing to play a ridiculous... £60 million pound price tag, so that one might end up happening since they're offering that, but they've already turned down £45 million from, from Chelsea for Gordon. Um, you know, they've, they've turned down an offer from us from him as well, but they're still spending money. They've spent a bit of money this summer, but then they're, they're willing to spend £30 million on Joe Pedro as well. How are they allowed to do this? Where's the, where's the fair play in the financial fair play there? How are they allowed to be, like, spend this money? That doesn't make sense to me, so... Let's just, why can't we just go willy-nilly? If these teams can get away with it, do you know what I mean? Man City get away with it all the time. Obviously, revenue, sponsorship deals and stuff they have for City, but the UEFA ban that they got and all that, you know what I mean? It's just brushed under the carpet. So I think you can get away with it a lot more than people make out, clearly, if Everton can continue to spend. Last window, they couldn't. They were getting Demory Gray for a million pound and 20 Kit Kats. But this summer, they've started spending money again. So I don't know. Don't understand that. But like I said, surely, João Pedro chooses the Brazilians at St. James's Park, the Samba Mags at St. James's Park, you know, joining Julian on, joining Bruno, maybe even joining Paqueta in some due course, but to play under Eddie Howe, the way we're going, our trajectory is much higher than the Leverton Football Club, so surely we, we get that one done if Pedro's got a choice between Newcastle and Everton, he's got to choose Newcastle. But yeah, can expect some, some movement again, like I said yesterday, on João Pedro. We haven't heard of Everton, of, of Wofford, sorry, of officially accepted that bid apparently they're still considering it but surely they will now i mean anything more than 30 million is just bonkers isn't it really absolutely bonkers but there's plenty of videos on joe pedro on the channel so make sure even just yesterdays i was ahead of the times you know what i mean so just check that out videos in the past on pedro don't want to go by him too much until he actually signs and we'll do we'll do more on him then but joe pedro newcastle have put an official 30 million pound bid in for watford's brazilian forward 30 million including add-ons Wait and see if Watford accept it. Pedro keen on the move. Now, another news in poor, poor, unfortunate news is that Callum Wilson ah, is injured yet again. Callum Wilson injured yet again. Eddie Howe was asked in his press conference this morning about Callum Wilson, who came off in the 68th minute against Man City on Sunday at St. James's Park. And he's going to have a scan on his hamstring. So Eddie Howe said he's hoping that it's not too serious, but he's not sure how long he's going to be ruled out for. And uh, they're doing a scan now, so we should find out this week what the extent of Wilson's injury. But he's definitely going to miss the trip to Tramia tomorrow night, Wednesday night, Carabao Cup. Make sure you uh, tune in to Mike by Channel TV for that one. We're going to have a live watch along for the Carabao Cup game against Tramia, so get amongst that. And then Wilson is most likely going to miss Wolves on Sunday as well. He's probably going to be out for a couple of weeks at least. Dreading here on the scan coming back, because the scan could rule him out for two or three months easy. And I'd feel absolutely devastated for the lad because... The World Cup's only in two, three months. He deserves to be on that plane, but this is the reason why he's probably not going to be on the plane. What, you know what I mean? It's like Mike Lone all over again, back in the day, David Beckham and that. Why, why would you, it's a massive risk taking a player that's injury prone. So, 
it's a big shame if it, if it does come out that Wilson is going to be out for months. We don't know yet, you know what I mean? He might be ruled out for 10 days, two weeks, something like that, but hamstring, scans, it's not looking good, Brev. So hopefully it's not the case, but we'll, we'll wait and see. This is the worst thing about Wilson, though. He's literally an unbelievable goal scorer, a born finisher, a natural goal scorer, one chance, one goal, that's all he needs. He's so clinical in front of goal, but he's made of knickknacks, he's made of poppadoms, he's made of Doritos, name your other favourite crisps that break easily. Quavers, do you know what I mean? He's, he's made of them all. It's such a shame that he's so injury prone. He just gets injured so easily. We've only played fucking three games. He's injured again already. Oh man, I, feel, I love Callum Wilson. Unbelievable number nine. Like I said, top goal scorer. Top, top goal scorer in front of goal. But uh, he just kind of get the run of games. Every season, he's missed months in a black and white shirt. His whole career, he's, he's, he's had these injury problems, hasn't he? So you feel so sorry for him because he could, he, he, he's one of the best. He's literally one of the best in front of goal in the Premier League. But he can't stay fit. So this again emphasises the fact of needing forwards. Not just Pedro, we need one more now. Once Wilson's injury probably comes out and says that it's going to be long term, a couple of months, we've got to go in and get a striker. We've got to. I mean, apparently they were saying, Craig Cook was saying that, um, the Daily Mail was saying that, depending on the extent of Wilson's injury, Newcastle might change their transfer targets in the last week or so of the window. Because obviously if Wilson goes out and there's the number nine out, there's a lot of goals missing and you've only got Chris Wood as backup or Joao Pedro who obviously Newcastle are trying to develop the binding for potential at the minute to play out wide as well you kind of chuck Chris Wood in we know he's not good enough doesn't score goals and you kind of chuck Joao Pedro in who's 20 about to turn 21 and only scored three goals in the Premier League last season you kind of expect him to come in and replace Carl Wilson and hit double figures and hit big numbers we're going to have to look elsewhere whether that be a cheap option a loan option of, of like Sir Amanda Abroya from Chelsea or if we go all out and try and get uh, an Ivan Tony, who's going to cost a lot of money. Or, you know, Eddie Howe wanted Calvert-Lewin, but he's injury prone as well. We can't be going after him. So do we look abroad? Do we look at someone else? Obviously, we'll try to get Benjamin Sesco. That one's gone now. He's went elsewhere. So there's got to be a list of targets, a list of strikers where Newcastle look at and go in for. Because honestly, like I've just said, we can't rely on Wood. can't rely on Pedro. We'll ask that much of him that soon. Plus, we need him as to be that winger in a way as well. Instead of Almiron or compete on the flanks. We need someone who's going to come in and score goals in the Premier League straight away. And now, yeah, that isn't easy to find. It's very hard to find. It's going to cost a lot of money. But Wilson getting injured this soon in the season, again, testifies the fact that we need another striker, not just Wilson. And we don't need a backup striker. We don't need a backup dancer like Stormzy. You know what I mean? We need someone up top who's as good as Wilson, if not better, who can push each other week in, week out, change places on the bench. Too much pressure is on Wilson. Every game he's got to play. Every game he's got to score. Everything tries to go through him in the box again on the end of things. There's too much on his body. You can see now he's not capable of doing it. His body can't do it. I'm sure he would love to do it. We would love him to do it. But the demand that's put on his body, he just can't handle it because he's just injury prone. So you need someone else in there. That's a top, top striker. And like I say, it's very, very hard to find. It's going to cost a lot of money. But if we don't get him, then there's our hopes of finishing top six, top seven, gone for me. Um... Without Wilson's goals, there's no way we finish in the top seven, even top eight maybe. Do you know what I mean? We need someone to come in who can be relied upon to score goals at this level. I think they will go out and get a striker now if Wilson's injury is long term, like the Daily Mail and other sources have said. But I, surely they've got to. Surely they've got to because it just ruins it just ruins everything. It ruins all the targets, the plans, the state of play, everything. So, I mean, but if they're going to spend 30 million on Pedro, are they then going to spend 30, 40, 50 million on another striker? That would be smashing the budget a little bit, wouldn't it, in FFP for, for the sake of maybe not being able to spend as much in the future. So I'm not sure, but it's terrible news, gutting news that Callum Wilson is injured again already. We're already in the first month of the, of the season. He's injured already. It's August and he's injured already. Oh, man. Got to get someone else in. Got to. Said it, I said it. We, a lot of people said it pre-season. Do you know what I mean? And um, Newcastle's target was actually the same in number nine this summer until Callum Wilson finished last season so strongly with that five or six goals in the last seven or eight games, you know, like, so it's disappointing. It's, it's devastating for, for us, the club, the fans, the players, Wilson himself, but it is what it is. We've got to get someone else in now. Before we get on to the last topic, I want to touch on football prizes. They're sponsoring this video and off the back of Sunday's game against Man City, Kieran Trippier with the unbelievable free kick. They've got this wicked prize up for grabs, a Trippier shirt, signed, framed and a few of the Newcastle goodies chucked in there all just for that small price that you can see on your screen there just a couple of quid to enter the raffle 
for your chance to win that. Brilliant stuff, the link will be in the description. And the last few winners have actually been from the Magpie channel. I've had all the Facebook messages saying, oh, thanks, uh, thanks for the prize, I entered it and I won. So they're all coming from us. So big yourselves up for people that are entering and, and good luck on this one as well. Now then lastly, we want to talk about Alan St. Maxman, who's been getting all the good lane late the last few days, rightly so, off the back of the uh, Metro Centre thing, just dishing out toys and everything, brilliant. And then the, the best performance yet in a Newcastle shirt, and Eddie Howe said that. Eddie Howe said it was his best performance yet. But Alan St. Maxman actually came out and said, I'm not sure why he said that, because I think I've played just as good as that, if not better in the past, just I haven't had enough quality in the box. So that's a big statement for him to make. He's saying, like, look, yeah, I got two assists against Man City, but I could get two assists a lot more if I had better players around us. So he was saying, you know, if he had more chances, if he had better forwards to, to get on the end of his crosses and stuff. So that's a that's a bold move. Alan St. Maxim wants another striker. He wants some help up top. But um, the point of this is, is that Alan St. Maxman is demanding a pay rise, according to the Daily Mail and a few other articles. They're saying that Alan St. Maxman wants to become one of Newcastle's top earners. Apparently he's frustrated and unhappy that the likes of Chris Wood, not surprising, like very much not surprising, but even Kieran Trippier and that who are on 100 grand a week now, Alan St. Maximin is on 80,000 pound a week or so. Loads of articles are stating that he's still on 38 grand a week, which isn't true. That's what he was when he first signed. He only signed a six year contract extension last, last season, uh, which boosted him up around 80,000 pound, but now he's feeling that he should be on more money, get more money, for me, I think that's too soon. You've got to be showing this on a consistent basis. I don't think 80 odd thousand pound a week is a bad deal for St. Maxman at the minute. Um, if he produces displays like he did on Sunday on a more regular basis, then of course he should be earning more money and be in that triple figure bracket. Um, but at the minute, if that is true, and there's a lot of people saying it, then I think he's taking the piss too soon, to be honest with you. Um, I don't think he's showing it on a consistent basis that he should be on more money. Like, we all love him, he's class, he's brilliant, the fans, the interaction with us and whatnot, but you've got to be putting up their numbers, assists and goals on a more regular basis to be knocking at the door to be earning the amount of what Kieran Trippier and that's earning. Like I say, it's understandable with Bruno, not with Bruno, sorry, um, with Wood, but Wood was just a panic buy in January, do you know what I mean? But I think Max Evie has a good season, then next summer or even February, March next year, he's put in a, a numerous amount of good performances, then you could offer him a pay rise. But at the minute, I think he's taking the piss a little bit. That'll do for today's transfer talk video then. Joao Pedro on the verge of joining Newcastle. 30 million pound bid submitted. Surely Watford have got to accept that one. And uh, Wilson out. Let us know which striker Newcastle should buy this summer to replace him, to replace the injury prone Wilson. Smash that like button, subscribe to my channel TV. I'll see you on the next one.